Okay, next we have Elk Creek Fire Department. Um, Bill McLaughlin, Chief Bill McLaughlin, is going to talk just a little bit about um, what Elk Creek has been up to and what you need to know for the election. Bill? So I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the information uh, that you would need to know uh, prior to uh, the proposed uh, mill levy that's coming up uh, uh, this fall. To start with, um, give you a little bit of uh, background on how the fire district gets its funding. Um, you know, a lot of folks I know are not, uh, you know, not aware that all of our funding is local. We don't get any funding from the county or the state or the federal government except uh, you know, for the occasional grant. So our funding essentially is 75% uh, um, property taxes, about 20% uh, uh, ambulance revenue from uh, you know, billing insurance for ambulance uh, services. Um, grants and donations um, you know, make up a big chunk of what's uh, left there. Donations, uh, unfortunately, are only about one percent of our uh, of our total budget, and uh, then you know just some miscellaneous uh, income. I do know that uh, there's been some uh, discussion around the community about uh, two hundred thousand dollars or various numbers that have been thrown around that uh, was in excess of last year's budget. And to explain that, it's not actually shown in this, but. Last year, because of all the fires that we had around Colorado, we actually were reimbursed $236,000 uh, for helping various uh, other departments or the Fed, federal government, or the state on various fires. Of that, about $115,000 went to expenses such as personnel and other things, which left actually a fairly good amount of money that was reimbursed to us for the equipment that we used to go into our equipment replacement fund. So in that respect, uh, last year was actually a, a pretty solid uh, budget year for Elk Creek, but uh, that was primarily because we spent a lot of the year uh, fighting fires. If we look just at the tax revenue uh, for uh, Elk Creek Fire, you can see that over the past uh, several years, uh, the tax revenues have dropped about 16%. And we have the assessment for 2014-2015 uh, in, and it's a 4% decrease from uh, this year. So uh, what we're seeing is a uh, you know, much, much tighter budget as we move forward. To uh, deal with uh, those budget cuts uh, that we've had to make, uh, we've, uh, we've, we've been scaling back the services that the fire department uh, has available. In the last year, we cut uh, two and a half out of 12 positions, which included our fire marshal and our training officer. Uh, we cut the cost of benefits to our uh, firefighters. Uh, we've sold several of our vehicles. We've done a lot of cuts that I know wasn't really popular when I told the crews they couldn't have coffee anymore, but you know, that's what you gotta do. And we've uh, started to uh, use what reserves we have. And at this point, we have basically um, you know, spent uh, as much out of our reserves as we can safely do. This, uh, unfortunately, is really bad timing for that because in next year, every 10 years, the fire department is graded on our uh, capability. And that grading is used to uh, essentially set your fire insurance rates. And so this is terrible timing for that because a lot of those cuts, unfortunately, are going to impact how that uh, grading is uh, done. Uh, grading goes from a class one to a class 10. Uh, Elk Creek has had an outstanding rating, the best in uh, the area up until now, at a class five. Um, with, if you, basically, homeowners are paying about 20% less than they would be uh, if, uh, you know, uh, in some of the other departments that don't have that, uh, that class five rating. Uh, it's gonna be very difficult for us to keep that class five moving into next year for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is that uh, out of four engines, one of them is not gonna be counted anymore 
because it's reached the maximum life that they will consider a fire engine as being uh, qualified. So once it hits 25 years, they, they just write it off and uh, so essentially they're going to say, you know, that fire engine and the two motor trucks are not, uh, you know, not uh, applicable to our grading. Uh, likewise, the cuts that we made, unfortunately, are also going to impact that grading. Uh, you know, if we, one of the things that they measure is, you know, whether we have a full-time training officer, how much hours the, uh, the firefighters uh, put in training, uh, whether we have a full-time fire prevention officer, and unfortunately, each of those things that we've had to cut is going to impact that uh, insurance rating. Uh, so, uh, the board, in looking at this, um, has elected to go ahead and put a mill levy proposition on the ballot. The, um, the current mill levy is 4.91 mills and uh, has been since Tabor was enacted in 1992. So, there has not been a, uh, a tax increase since uh, it was first required that it be approved by, um, by the uh, voters. That uh, mill levy is the lowest in either Parker or uh, Jefferson County by a lot. Uh, currently, uh, you know, at 4.9 mills, uh, the owner of a $300,000 house pays about $117 a year, so it's a very small part of the tax bill that you get each year, as compared with, for example, if you live down in Lakewood, where you're paying uh, about $328. Under the proposed increase, the mill levy for Elk Creek would still be the lowest in either Jefferson or Park County. Uh, and it would be about $176 for a uh, $300,000 house. So essentially, for a $300,000 house, the increase would be about $60 a year, or $4.98 a month. The money would go to uh, basically restoring one of the positions. So uh, what we are proposing to do would be to have uh, one assistant chief who would be the training officer and the fire marshal. Uh, we would not restore the, all of the positions that we cut. Uh, and uh, we would immediately replace those old, the 25 year old trucks so that uh, we would be able to uh, qualify them uh, next year for the, uh, the insurance regrading. Uh, one of the other big things that we would be looking at doing is funding protective gear for volunteers. You know, while we have uh, cut a couple of uh, the paid positions, at the same time we now have more volunteers than we've had in many years, and we have a lot more people in the community who would like to volunteer. Uh, unfortunately, the, you know, even volunteers aren't free. Uh, we have to have the equipment to issue to them, we have to provide them the training, and we have to fund the pension program for them, uh, you know, in order to, to take them on. So at this point, you know, we have a good number of volunteers, and we're not taking any new, new applications. It's a good thing for us, you know, in that we have good staffing, but we would like to get uh, more volunteers as well, especially to make up the, uh, the difference in the other position, the full-time position that we cut. And then finally, uh, we would be looking at both building up a fund to continue replacing apparatus. As I mentioned, we've uh, had to cut uh, the reserve that we normally would use for purchasing apparatus and also to maintain our buildings. Uh, and we need, to, we need to replenish that so that we don't end up in the same situation a couple years down the road when the next few fire engines start reaching the end of their life. So again, that, uh, that position that we would be restoring would be you know, half fire marshal, half training position. So it would be filling the two positions just in one, one person. And the primary job that that person has is recruiting and training the volunteers. That's, that's pretty much what we want to do. Uh, the other big thing with that is that, again, it would help that insurance rating to have that position back on. With uh, this plan, we're also looking at you know streamlining our operations. Uh, you know, we uh, when I started with Elk Creek, we had 24 different uh, fire engines and trucks and everything, and uh, that's a lot. It's a lot of maintenance costs, a lot of insurance costs. 
So as we're uh, moving forward with this, we're also working, you know, moving to a more efficient model. Uh, one of those is that instead of having you know, a big structure engine, a city engine, and a brush truck at every station, uh, that you know, combined cost about $750,000. We're going to look at uh, replacing those with a single mid-sized truck that would uh, essentially cost half that amount. So as we move forward, you know, I, what I want to do is cut the overall cost for us to maintain. You know, right now we've got about $4 million replacement cost in all the fire engines. I want to cut that down to about $3 million and then we have less issue with trying to maintain and replace those apparatus as we move forward. Another rumor that's gone around town has been that this uh, bill levy proposal would be to add union firefighters. Uh, we're not looking at adding any positions that would be eligible for the union. That training officer as a chief officer would not be eligible. And then uh, secondly, uh, you know, in the state of Colorado, uh, they're, the only way for, for a union to exist in a fire department is if 50% of the residents of the fire district vote to allow them to have collective bargaining. So while our firefighters belong to the International Association of Firefighters, uh, they, do, they do not have a union contract, they do not have any of the bargaining abilities that city firefighters do. Uh, we would be adding more volunteers, We'd be looking at, you know, the uh, protective clothing and training that we need, you know, to get those volunteers on board. Okay, and that's pretty much uh, what I've got to talk about. So. <laughs> Thank you.